10 people were killed, including one police officer in the latest mass shooting in Boulder, Colorado. The shooting took place at a King Supers grocery store at 2.30 PM local time. And we now have the identity of the lone gunman in this case. But we do have a policy of withholding that individual's name. He's a 21 year old and his brother has now spoken to the press about possible motivations. But before we get to that, um, let me talk about the victims here. Uh, starting with Eric Telly, who was the officer shot and killed in this shooting. Um, he joined the Boulder Police Department in 2010 and was identified as one of the victims of the shooting. He was actually the first officer to respond to the scene, according to Chief Harold. Um, and so here is an image of the officer. He has seven Seven children, and it's just, you know, anytime an innocent life is lost, it's tragic. But he's one of 10 people who were gunned down in that grocery store yesterday in Boulder, Colorado. Um, and uh, the police did release the specific names of the victims. Let's go to this video um, to hear who the victims were. The last victim was removed from the scene at 1.30 a.m. today. By 2.02 a.m., all the victims had been identified. By 3.59 a.m., the families of the victims have been notified. I'm gonna read the names of the deceased. Denny Strong, 20 years old. Nevin Stadinsky, 23. Ricky Odds, 25. Trelona Barkanovic, 49. Suzanne Fountain, 59. Terry Liker, 51. Officer Eric Talley, 51. Kevin Mahoney, 61. Lynn Murray, 62. Jody Waters, 65. Our hearts go out to all the victims killed during this senseless act of violence. And was obviously it's been less than a week since the tragic shootings happened in multiple spas in Georgia that happened last week. I was on break, but you know that people were still reeling from that, and boom, we get hit with another mass shooting. Again, the the suspect is a 21 year old here. He has been taken into custody, and he's facing 10 counts of murder in the first degree. You know, I want to know what you thought. Like, what went through your mind as this, you know, story broke yesterday? Um, because I, I hate admitting this, but it's gotten to a point where I I almost feel numb to it. Because, and it's it's part of like a defense mechanism, right? Because you get emotionally invested in these stories, and you. I think there's like an element of hope where you think maybe something will change, but we know time and time again, nothing changes, right? It doesn't matter how many people die, it doesn't matter if it's dozens of children. Um, what were your thoughts as this story broke? You know, I gotta echo some of your thoughts, Anna. There is a sort of sense of hopelessness with all of this because I know personally for me, I think back to what happened in Sandy Hook where a bunch of kids, children, Children at school were mowed down, about 20 something of them, by a gunman, you know, a deranged cat. And, you know, I thought for sure back then, like for sure, everybody on the right wing, on the NRA types, nobody's gonna stand for the children. Cause, you know, whenever we hear stuff about anti drugs or anti pornographic or any of this stuff, stuff that doesn't actually kill people, um, whenever we hear these anti um, those measures, it's all about the kids and the children and how do we keep them safe and how do we keep precious Johnny and Susan safe. And, you know, that's often the rhetoric that we hear. And then, you know, when Children were literally killed at school and nothing happened. I basically, I'm not gonna lie, I lost all hope. And and on the subject of guns, I became very cynical because at the time I lived in New York City where the gun laws are extremely draconian. And you know, like literally just having a gun, being caught with a gun. Period, you go to jail for two years. And that goes from rich to poor to black to white. If you are found to illegally have a gun, um, 
you will go to prison. And you know, as a New Yorker, I, I grew so cynical to the point of, you know what, if they want to kill each other out there, let them do what they do. Because I live in New York, we have really um, you know, stringent gun laws. I feel relatively safe as you can feel in a city with 13 million people. And I sort of, you know, I, I stopped thinking about it, you know, and, and it's messed up and it's sad, but I, I sort of thought of Gun rights is sort of the abortion of the right wing in the sense that like these guys, they're never changing their minds about this. Um, and any sort of movement in the direction of taking these, their quote unquote rights, <laughs> second amendment rights away uh, have become a non-starter. And so I, I'm not gonna lie, I've become kind of hopeless when it comes to any movement on this stuff. Cuz even children, our precious American children don't matter when it comes to the rights of the right wings to have um, to own their guns, and I think, you know, part of the calculation here is that I think they've made the decision that this is worth it, right? In the sense that, in order for me to have as many guns as I want, these type of things happening every now and again to people is worth what it means to have that gun. And I, and you know, and I know I've gone on for a little while here, but I just want to say this last thing. I think about something like the stimulus or. <laughs> something like welfare where they say we got to mean test it cuz god forbid somebody who doesn't deserve it gets a check mm -hmm. or gets food or gets something that would be just horrible whereas with something like gun violence is like who cares if undeserving people die i get to have what's mine and that comes before anything you know it's interesting though because the same so-called law abiding citizens who are worried about getting their guns taken away um are completely either delusional um, or intentionally lying about the intentions of people who are asking for, uh, in my opinion, common sense gun regulation. Because no one's looking to take guns away from law abiding citizens. There's a problem in this country where it's far too easy for anyone, including people who have been prosecuted for domestic violence, including people who have criminal records, including people who have mental health issues, it's far too easy for them to access weapons like this. And it's, it's fascinating because it seems as though owning guns, having access to guns is the only thing that our right wing politicians treat as like an absolute that should have no, <laughs> limita no limitations whatsoever. Let me be clear, everything that's considered a right under our constitution has its limitations, freedom of speech, has limitations, right? Mm -hmm. The right to own guns also has limitations. And I think it's just fascinating that you have one side that's saying, hey, look, clearly we have a problem. You have all these innocent people dying. So let's try to find a solution without infringing on people's constitutional rights. And then you have the disingenuous side, right? You have the side that's led by NRA types who serve the interests of gun manufacturers and literally lie to the American people about the regulations that are being proposed. Um, I'm gonna be honest with the audience. Um, I've Definitely, you know, changed my mind on guns, you know, throughout the years. Sure. I used to have a more hardline approach toward guns. Uh, I don't anymore. Um, I'm a lot more open to uh, law abiding citizens having access to guns, myself included. And so I, I don't want to take that right away. And as far as I've seen, there has been nothing proposed legislatively that would take guns away uh, from law abiding citizens. But doesn't matter if people have mental health issues. I mean, Republicans love to point to that whenever these mass shootings happen. Oh, it's a mental health problem. That's what it is. Okay, great. Where's the funding then? Where's right. the funding? What are you going right. to do about it? I mean, it's just lip service. And what I've realized, not just through this story, but through multiple stories, is that for politicians, certain groups of people are just used as props, right? That's it. They're just used as props. Uh, Blue Lives Matter. No, 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 police, they're just props when you wanna make a point about how much you hate black people, okay? Yep. Because a cop just got gunned down. I don't see any of these right wingers in Congress uh, talking about how much blue lives matter. They don't care at all, okay? And it happens on the other side too with Democrats who weaponize identity politics and use groups of people as props and pretend as if you know they're better than the other party in, in providing rights and all of that. Um, but look, I, I just, 
I think it's important to hear from the victims as well. Some of the people who were in the building as this shooting took place and JR put this video together sharing the you know, witness accounts of what occurred. So let's take a look at that. See a shooter, I just saw terrified faces running towards me. And that's when I turned and ran in the other direction. We were um, at the checkout and shots just started going off. I said, run right now. We have three seconds, he shot towards us like, we could feel it. First I heard like a loud bang. So I kind of thought like a shelf fell over or something like that. But then immediately when I heard multiple Gunshots, I knew that it was something more than that. Could you ever imagine that you would have been in a situation like this, Ryan, where you are? In Boulder? No. I, 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 Boulder feels like a bubble. And a bubble bursts. And, and that's heartbreaking to think that, that people died in this today. Definitely panic. Uh, I think a lot of people just didn't know like exactly where he was. We were like sitting ducks, you know. And that's that's one thing that I'm 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 relieving it. I'm looking at it in my head, and that but that, that bothers me. I'm I'm still shivering. I'm still shaking. It doesn't feel like there's anywhere safe anymore. Sometimes, so, and this feels like the safest spot in America. And I just nearly got killed for getting a a, a, a soda, you know. And a bag of chips. Yeah, there's really no safe spot in America. You might have stringent gun laws in some states, maybe in some municipalities, but we're one country, guys. It doesn't matter. There's nothing stopping someone from crossing state lines. I mean, we saw that with Kyle Rittenhouse, <laughs> you know, crossing state lines with weapons, whether they're legal weapons, illegal weapons, it doesn't matter. I mean, you need actual leadership from the federal government, which is honestly unlikely to happen. But just to give you some more details about Colorado, I mean, the Denver metropolitan area had seen more mass shootings or more mass school shootings specifically between 19. 99 and 2019 than any other of the 25 largest metropolitan areas in the United States. And Colorado ranked in the top five states for mass shootings at schools and overall, according to a 2019 analysis by the Denver Post. And for anyone who's thinking, all right, well, if the pandemic you know, starts to kind of get under control and we're living in a so called post pandemic society. It's likely that we're going to go back to seeing these mass shootings happen the same way they happened before. But, you know, my theory is no, it's likely to happen at a much higher rate because the fact of the matter is during the pandemic in 2020 specifically, there was a giant increase in the number of people who purchased guns. In fact, nearly 40 million guns were purchased legally in 2020 and another 4.1 million were bought in January of this year alone. So we're really swimming in guns in this country was. And for anyone who thinks that they might live in some bubble in the country that's completely safe from this type of gun violence, think again. You know, California has pretty strict gun laws and Again, we're one country, California isn't an island. And we have been seeing an increase in gun violence in the state of California as well in recent months. So this is this had been the reality in America. It will continue to be the reality in America because we have an ineffective Congress that just engages in the same discourse every single time we have these mass shootings. Yeah, and another thing that that adds to my hopelessness, Anna, is the sort of lack of credibility on the other side when it comes to dealing with the problems. Um, I'll take it to use abortion as another example. The reason why I just can't take anybody seriously about abortion, because oftentimes you hear people say, well, I'm against abortions. All right, cool. Why don't we do everything we can to avoid them? I.e. sex education, i.e. making birth control readily available, i.e. other forms of contraceptives, et cetera, et cetera. If what we wanna do is prevent as many you know, abortions as possible, we'll take those steps to ensure that. They never want to do any of that stuff, and I think the same thing goes with um, with gun control in the sense that, all right, if you want to say we can't take the guns away, fine, fine. It, the, the sort of GDs out of the bottle when, as um, in respects to guns in this country. 
Are we investing in mental health? Um, and also, man, I think people underestimate financial insecurity. You know, a lot of these people don't have a lot of prospects in their in their lives. You know, when it comes to jobs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and drug abuse, and all of these kinds of things that we don't put the proper amount of investment in healing people from these problems that drive them to the places that do this stuff, right? Um, so you know, yeah. the the readily availableness of gun is one thing, but the conditions that allow for people to sort of turn into the kinds of people that go out and shoot up a mall or shoot up a school, we're not addressing that either. So we're getting it on both sides. Yeah, that's such a great point. And in regard to the um, the shooter in this case, uh, again, he's a 21 year old. Uh, we also know that he's Muslim, um, but we don't know specifically what his motive was. His brother spoke to the press and said that he's been suffering from some uh, mental health issues, particularly paranoia. Uh, for instance, he thought that his high school uh, was hacking into his phone and tracking him. Um, so, you know, I hesitate to get into those kinds of details right now because the story is developing and we don't know what his motive was. Um, and of course, we'll update you guys as we learn more about what that is. But you're right. I mean, you do have to take a holistic approach. Like, clearly, we have issues with our gun laws. Um, but I'm tired of Republicans bringing up mental health, pretending as though that's something that they want to focus on. But really, all they do is use it as a scapegoat to deflect from the possibility of, of passing common sense gun legislation. And then, as soon as, you know, everyone with their short attention spans, uh, focuses on whatever else is hot in the news cycle the next day, uh, they just drop it. They, they don't do anything about funding mental health. They, they do mean, nothing. Just, Anna, just look at yeah. what they did with voting rights. <laughs> like just they legislated yeah. the hell out of voting rights, right? And nothing is more foundational to our democracy than the right to go out and participate in the franchise. And every chance they get, they made it as hard as possible to vote. Where is that same zeal and that same energy when it comes to preventing the wrong people from getting their hands on guns? We don't see it, so that's how you know it's a load of crap. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.